In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a top-down view of an elliptical orbit. We'd want to do this so that we can get a top-down true or real representation of the orbit, one that has the proper shape, not one that's distorted because our camera's looking at the orbit from a different location. For instance, you see this picture of the solar system I got here. Pluto obviously has a different inclination as compared to some of the other planets. If I had my camera pointed from a top-down view from the sun's point of view, if you look at the real orbit down here in orange, the camera might only see this red orbit here. Now, if my camera was actually more towards the side, I might see a more elliptical shape. Maybe even if directly on the side of it, I would see just a line instead. And so none of these really represent the true shape of the orbit. We really need to find a camera view like this, where it's just a top-down view looking at a flat orbital plane so that we can see that true shape. And that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to move the camera to a top-down view of the orbit so you can see its true shape. Let's get to it. The way that we're going to find the top-down view is that we're going to be looking at our orbital angular momentum. Now this is slightly different than like a spin angular momentum, which would be the vector about which an object spins in relation to its center of mass. And the orbital angular momentum would be the vector about which the body spins while in an orbit. So instead of the center of mass, we're looking more at the center of rotation. The vector actually will point orthogonal to the orbital plane. So if we point our camera's line of sight along this vector, then we'll be looking at a top-down view of the flat orbital plane. And so we'll be getting that full picture of what the orbit really looks like. Now for two-body problems, this should be a constant vector. However, for more complicated missions, maybe multi-maneuver missions, it might vary. And so you might actually need to do this multiple times to find the top-down view of different orbits on different parts of the mission. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to remind you of two things. First, I'm not going to really get into how to create a mission very much in this video. I have done other videos on creating a simple orbit mission, so go ahead and check that video out there. Also, we're going to be using report files for this. I did a video specifically on the basics of understanding report files, so go ahead and check that one out too if you're looking for more information on that. For the first step, let's go ahead and start the GMAT application. So look for a shortcut like this. When you start it up, it's going to open up the welcome page. You can go ahead and click that X in the top right to close the welcome page. Next step, we're going to go ahead and start a new mission. If you already had GMAT open and was working on something else, you can click this new mission button up on the toolbar. When you click that, it's going to give this pop-up that asks if you really want to load the default mission. Go ahead and click yes. And when you do that, you'll see here on the left in the resources tab, all of the stuff turned into the uh, the default stuff. So you got the default spacecraft, the default propagator, the default orbit view. Next step is we're going to go ahead and run the default orbits simulation. There's a play button up here on the toolbar. Go ahead and click it. When you do that, you will see the default orbit view and default ground track plots open up their windows and show you the orbit, the default orbit. Now, if you look at the default orbit, you'll notice that we're looking at it not from a top down view. And based on this view right here, if I were trying to draw the path that I saw the spacecraft moving, I would see an orbit similar to this one right here on the screen, this highly elliptical shape right here. But that's not the real shape of the orbit, right? And so if I'm wanting to show the true shape of the orbit, I need to move the camera that I'm looking at this 3D object into a different location. Now you can try and do that with your mouse, right? You can pan or 3D pan with your mouse. But how do you know when you actually get to that point where it's flat, right? How do you know when you're looking at the true orbit and you're not off by, you know, 5, 10, 15 degrees and you're seeing not the true orbit? Now you might notice that there's this plus X here showing that the X vector is actually coming at you from the middle of the screen. If we double click open the default orbit view, you'll see that the viewpoint vector is aligned with the X axis you'll see this 30,000 kilometers here. So we're looking at this orbit from 30 kilometers, 30,000 kilometers in the X direction. 
So we're gonna need to find a way to change these values so that we're actually having our camera pointed in a top-down view. All right, we are going to add a report file output item. So there on the left tree, you'll see the folder that says output. You're gonna to wanna to right click on that and in the menu that pops up, you need to find and click on the item that says report file. When you do that, you'll notice that another item is added to the output folder. You can see it here on the right, it's called report file one. We're gonna go ahead and double click on it to open the edit window. There we can adjust all the properties and options to adjust the report file to be written the way we want it to. We need to go ahead and add some the angular momentum terms to the report file. So go ahead and click on the edit button underneath the parameter list. In the pop-up window that appears, go ahead and search in the object properties list for the angular momentum terms. That's gonna be HX, HY, and HZ. Highlight them and then hit the right arrow to add them to the selected values list. When you're done with that, go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that they are added to the parameter list of the report file. The last thing we need to go over of this window is the file save options. These are pretty straightforward. You can type in the file name you want here in that edit text box on the left. This will save to the default location. I really don't like doing that because sometimes you don't have access to the default location if like you're on a shared computer or it's buried somewhere and you have to try and go find it. What I would rather do is hit the browse button here on the right. When you do that, it will open up a file explorer window where you can browse for the exact folder where you wanna put it and write in the name here on the bottom and click open. And that will add the entire path to this file name here on the left. You could have just typed in the path and the file name as well if you had it somewhere or maybe you could copy paste it from something. So go ahead and adjust the name of the file and the folder that it's in then click OK. So we're going to go ahead and rerun the default simulation. So click the play button up here on the top menu bar. After that runs, go ahead and navigate to wherever you had the report file saved to and open it up. You should see a couple of columns added to the report file for the angular momentum HX, HY, and HZ terms. Now these should be constant for like two body problems. For the default orbit simulation, I probably could have made it so that they were constant by maybe going and making sure that the aerodynamic drag model was turned off and maybe changing what gravity model was used. But the variation is small enough to demonstrate how to get a top-down view of the orbit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose a random line here in the report file just to use for this example. Now with those values that we got from the last step, we're going to double click open the default orbit view. And in the window that appears, we're going to change the viewpoint vector to match those values that we pulled out. So this first box here, we're gonna change it from 30,000 to minus 957. The second box we're gonna to change to minus 7,076, and the third box we're gonna to change to 52,186. So go ahead and update those parameters and click OK. Now that we have the report file updated, let's go ahead and rerun the simulation. So hit the play button up in the top menu bar, and you'll see that when the default orbit view is updated, that the camera is in a different location. Let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And you'll see that we're no longer looking down the x-axis, but rather we're looking at it from a top-down, flat orbital plane view of the orbit. So this is what the true orbit looks like. Now we can go ahead and change the zoom level of this so that we stay looking down that angular momentum vector, but we're closer to the orbit. There's a few ways to do it. First is using your mouse. You can right click and hold the right mouse button and move your mouse in and out and it will zoom in and zoom out on the orbit. And so you can get closer or farther away depending on whether you want to, for instance, see the XYZ axes or whether you want to get a real close up shot on the orbit. Another way to do that is to go back to the viewpoint vector and adjust the magnitudes in that vector. So for instance, we could take off orders of magnitude by moving the decimal places, or maybe we can add an order of magnitude by moving the decimal place to the right. Now these numbers we have here are pretty small, so if you tried to do that, you would probably get a little too close to the Earth. So another option would be just to divide all these numbers in half, and that's what you get right here. 
The other option is that you could always divide by the magnitude to get a unit vector and then scale it by a height above the Earth that you wanted to get. So if you wanted to see what the orbit looked like at a certain altitude, you can do it that way. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this cool trick for looking at your orbit from a top-down view. I'm going to go ahead and call it a video. I'll see you in the next one.